Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the RIS Media Agent uh, Series. I'm Sherry Johnson, and we are so excited to have you here today uh, on yet another educational webinar that's just going to help you so much in handling risk reduction uh, and risk management with your buyers, with your sellers. We've got two amazing panelists and two awesome sponsors today. Uh, before I introduce them, though, uh, as you're joining us right now, please uh, go into the uh, questions area and put in there for us where you're calling in from, where you're tuning in from, what state you're in, and just say hello to us all so that we can we know you're here and we can um, see who's with us today. Uh, again, we're going to have an awesome webinar for you. We've got really great people that are uh, giving their time, their talent, and sharing their great amazing strategies that are going to help you negotiate better um, but more importantly keep everyone you know out of risk and also keep deals together and help you put more deals together for your buyers for your sellers so um, again I'm Sherry Johnson and I'm our moderator today our amazing sponsors 210 home buyers warranty and pillar to post uh, both really names everyone knows they're here today and we're going to introduce uh, them in a moment um, and also, you know, we've got two agents here that have been in the business of both very long time. They're going to be sharing strategies that you have not heard of before that will help you take the stress out of this and really um, add tremendous value. And that's uh, Kimberly McAleenan and Don Hinton. Um, and I'm going to introduce them in a moment. Um, but again, this Today is gonna really wow you. I think you're gonna get some really amazing takeaways you can put into practice right away and help you compete at a higher level. And again, I'm Sherry Johnson, uh, CEO and founder of Sherry Johnson Coaching. And uh, I love doing RIS uh, media webinars and providing amazing value to all of you. And this is an opportunity and I'm just uh, really honored and privileged to be moderating today's event. And Kimberly McAleenan. Hi there, Kimberly. Kimberly is uh, coming in from Denver, Colorado. Kimberly, tell us, you know, size and scope of your market. I know it's it's insane there a little bit in terms of um, activity and, and competition, but welcome to the show and thanks for being here and, and tell everybody a little bit about yourself, please. Hi, um, I'm Kimberly, as Sherry said, I'm Kimberly McLean with Realty One Group Five Star in Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm a Navy veteran, military relocation professional, and certified luxury home marketing specialist. Um, our market is moving very quickly. Um, I know that there's a lot of rumors that there is no inventory. There is actually inventory. It is just moving faster than it has ever moved before. So it's not that inventory doesn't exist. You just need to be more on top of it. Um, so, you know, we're seeing anywhere from 10 to 40 offers per property and properties are selling for 100K over list price. So market moves really fast here. Yes, and and you have some really, you've, this isn't my first time interviewing you. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we'll tell more about that later, but I know how you do the business and um, I've known you for almost three years now. So I'm excited for you to share a lot of what you're doing because it does help uh, put a different perspective on how you can still do a home inspection and still be the the choice of offer that gets chosen for your buyer and that's a really that's really a struggle so many agents are having right now so thank you for being here thank you for your service as well and next i want to introduce don hinton hi don hi sherry how are you today i'm fabulous so, so, great, so great to see you don is coming in from chicago and berkshire hathaway home services stark real estate and you have an amazing role you're uh, selling homes, you're managing offices. Tell everybody uh, what your size and scope of where you are in, in the market. Thank you. Um, so I am the designated managing broker of uh, our second largest office with the Berkshire Hathaway Stark Group. We have 18 offices in Northwest Chicago and into Wisconsin, um, over, just over 600 agents. And our company um, 
our particular office did about 150 million last year, but our company is about a million, I'm sorry, a billion and a half in business at this time. Um, the Chicago land market is not nearly as crazy as Colorado is, but it is still extremely strong. We're having multiple offers on, on well-priced properties. And what really is um, hasn't changed at all in the last couple of years after the, the pandemic is that the quality of the buyers is so strong and so deep that pretty much at every price point, you've got cash buyers. You have buyers with 20% or more down. And it does make it extremely challenging for buyers who don't have those means. And so if this is such a timely topic where you're balancing, you know, not pushing your clients to be on their limits, still trying to get them the house, but always looking out for their best interests. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and you're adding such value to today's uh, show and, and the topics we're covering. I, I know uh, really between both of you, um, I appreciate your time and you're spending the time today to do this. Um, so it's gonna be great. Next up, our sponsors um, from 210 Home Buyers Warranty is Sue Ellen at Birchfield. Hi, Sue Ellen, welcome. Hi, Sherry. Thanks so much for having us today. Yeah, well, it's our pleasure. We appreciate you sponsoring the event. Tell us a little bit about 210 Home Buyers Warranty for people who may not know who you are. Absolutely. So I hail from the Atlanta area. I travel all over the country working with our most treasured partners, real estate brokerages and, uh, and other partners as well. Um, I've been with 210 Home Buyers Warranty over 20 years. I've made it my business home. I'm very passionate about what we do in providing protection. Uh, 210 Home Buyers Warranty now over 40 years in business in in the home warranty industry. Warranties, that's all we do. So you may know us uh, in some places, uh, audience, as the largest new home warranty company in the nation, the 10-year structural insurance-backed warranty. One out of every seven homes comes with a 210 uh, insurance-backed warranty. Um, same company, also the one-year systems and appliance program, national. And so whether you are buying, selling, building, um, we can protect you. We've got a whole lot of home warranties looking for good homes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing your contribution as well. Um, and for you being here and sponsoring today. Um, next, I want to introduce John Verdon from Pillar to Post. Hi, John. How are you, Sherry? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good. Good to be here. Thank you. Excellent. And I know, um, you know, everyone listening too, there's some really great giveaways and educational content that both of these companies are going to be giving us. Um, you know, a lot of people know Pillar to Post. Um, just tell us a little bit about, you know, your company, your role, and, and how, how well you deliver the home inspection process nationally. It's unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, as Sherry said, my name is John. I've been with Pillar to Post for about five years. I work out of the Toronto area. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the VP of marketing. Pillar to Post has been around for 30 years. We operate in 49 states and nine provinces, which makes us the largest uh, home inspection network in North America with about a thousand inspectors. Over the years, we've done over 3 million inspections. We have a 96, 97% approval rate from home buyers and from uh, realtors. Uh, all of our inspectors are certified and trained with the latest technology and, you know, on this risk management thing we're talking about, you know, they're all fully E and O insured. Our mission is to ensure competent home ownership for home buyers. So that's one person we serve, the home buyer, but we also want to be a very trusted partner to the real estate community. And by helping real estate agents and realtors get the closings faster, we want to save them time while minimizing their risks. And we obviously want to delight their clients. And, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can find online about the pillar to post difference and why a home inspection is not just a home inspection. And so uh, at your leisure, um, if you go to that URL, you'll learn a little about the pillar to post difference. And, and uh, we really value our, our partnership with the realtor community. So thanks for letting us be here. Absolutely. And thank you for telling us, both of you, for telling us about your awesome companies. Um, so 
before I forget, we are recording as usual. We are recording uh, this broadcast and it will be sent out to all registrants. Um, I just want to make sure everyone always asks, is this being recorded? We are recording this. And I want to start by asking, uh, I'll start with our panelists. Um, what does risk management mean to you? Because we hear that term, I feel like agents, you know, I've been doing this 26 years as well as, as all of you, you know, being in the business a long time. And we hear risk management. Sometimes we, we think um, as agents that that just is something the brokers deal with, right? Or that um, that doesn't apply to me because I take a, a three hour class once a year and I kind of check the box that I've handled risk management. What does it really mean in day-to-day -day practice when you're working in the field with buyers, with sellers, and it, we're going to dive into how to do that in a few moments with other questions. But over, just when you hear risk management, what does that mean to you? I'll start with you, Kimberly. Um, you know, everything in life comes with risk. Everything we do, driving to work, everything we do has risk, but managing that risk to do things safely. So when you drive a car, you wear a seatbelt. When you buy a home, you should have a home inspection. There are lots of things that go hand in hand and, you know, risk comes with everyday living and we're going to take risks because nobody wants to sit in their house the rest of their life so there are things you take risks on but it's just about limiting the risk and being smart about the ways that you can still move forward but as safely as possible i love it and what a great analogy you know you wouldn't you wouldn't get in a car you wouldn't buy a house without you know we, we wouldn't drive around going 60 miles an hour without a, a seatbelt on and we shouldn't buy a home without a home inspection i completely agree with you uh don your thoughts you know, to me, risk management is always keeping your clients, um, their strengths and their limitations in mind, especially in a situation where it's it's heightened competition to, you know, put in the very best offer. In my experience on professional standards committees and grievance committees with our Realtor Association, it is astounding to me some of the situations that you see agents will create by not keeping their clients' best interest in mind. So to me, risk management is never losing sight of the fact that we are here to represent their best interests and um, make sure they're not in a position that they they just can't afford to be in. Right, and it's like giving them options. I always say, you know, giving people options and discussing the risks and benefits of each of them, you know, and that's where we can add tremendous value. Sue Ellen and John, I'm gonna ask you to just share with us what does risk management mean to both of you? It's a little bit different from your fields and your perspective. So I'm going to ask you, I'll, I'll start with you, Sue Ellen. Well, Sherry, uh, you know, it, it really comes down to the agents and the brokerages that work with us that offer our program to their clients. So, you know, for us, it's being instrumental in, in helping you as the agent retain, retain mm -hmm. referrals and repeat business that you've worked so hard for and it you know with with the rush in today's market there's a ton of buyer's remorse out there some of it most of it relates to the unexpected maintenance and repair so we suggest uh, that you always use at least the four pillars of risk management uh, use the state approved sales contract that's a no-brainer applicable seller's disclosures depending on what state and municipality that you're in offering a home inspection right john and then attaching a home warranty service agreement thanks sherry really a great answer you don't even think about a sales contract as being i mean we all get into the go 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 as don said it's like the competition to the rush and and we don't even consider some of the basics that we use on a day-to-day -day basis your contract in and of itself is a big form of risk management for your clients we take that for granted i think sometimes john your thoughts ours is sort of two prongs i mean number one is the home buyer you know usually in most cases the biggest expenditure they'll ever make in their lives and we want to help them make a confident home ownership decision and you know minimize the risk of that decision and just make them aware no home is perfect but everything is fixable and so uh, we don't want to be alarmist but we want to make sure that people have a great idea uh, and and they get a professional home inspection so that's one area of risk and then the other one is we want to take risk away from the realtors by being fully eno insured and so 
uh, if something is missed or something goes on, it's it's on us and it's not on the realtor. And so I think that's a big piece that's that's missing. And 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 quite frankly, with all the waived home inspections going on these days, I, I hope it doesn't happen. But the math says it's going to happen. There's going to be lawsuits uh, in the next six months or a year over. Uh, you know, people who ended up in a home without a home inspection and felt that they were forced to waive the home inspection. And uh, so that that's what concerns us. And that's what it means to us to uh, take the risk away from from a realtor. All fantastic uh, additions. And, you know, I remember from our pre-panel conversation, you know, ensuring competent home ownership, you know, and just to summarize that it, this is so serious and um, it really is. I mean, people are buying everything they see and everything they don't see and, and can't see. And um, which is, I think it's irresponsible in a lot of ways when people are saying, we're just waving home inspections, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I hope those of you that are really here listening um, will hear you can win multiple offers in a highly competitive environment ensuring everyone is protected. So I'm gonna jump right in and start with, um, both of our panelists have some, some fantastic ways they manage expectations on the front end of the conversation and really have conversations up front uh, so that when they are in live situations, so that emotional, um, you know, they, when it's happening live, everybody's a little bit more stressed out than when it's not. So I'm gonna start with Kimberly. How do you tee this up? How do you how do you do the buyer's consultation and talk to your clients at the beginning so that you can ensure everyone's educated, they know what's going on, there are no surprises because it's hard to cover everything, but really uh, the way you describe this is just it's just really perfect. So go ahead. Um, yeah, so there are, you know, lots of ways to manage, ex manage expectations. The biggest one is by setting everything up in the beginning. So I typically do a buyer's consultation. I also do a listing consultation where we go over all of the things of the way the contract looks, where the outs are, where the ins are, what it takes to be competitive. Um, and so by having these conversations up front, it's a lot easier when you're not stressed out as opposed to when you see a house and all offers are due in three hours. It's like, well, now everybody's panicking and they're willing to give up all these things that they shouldn't be giving up. So it's important to set those expectations from the beginning by having a really thorough buyer's consultation. And then also at the seller side, like letting the sellers know, like, you know, we, I always do a walkthrough and I'm like, Hey, here are the things people are probably going to ask for. We should just address them now. So, you know, and setting the expectations for buyers that, Hey, we're not going into a house to nickel and dime them to death. We're trying to get you a house, a good house in this market, but there are some things that they need to be aware of. And if you have that conversation up front, it's a lot easier when you're in the middle of the fire. Absolutely. And uh, Don, right? You know, much along the lines of what Kimberly is saying, it's so important to be very communicative about what the process is going to entail. And, you know, the buyer process has its steps, the seller process has its steps. But if you explain what your role is as their trusted advisor in taking them through this process, and that you are going to be explaining to them that this is a series of decisions that they're going to make from the beginning of, you know, as a buyer seeing a home to evaluating which home they want to make an offer on, a, a real um, reviewing the comparables to make sure that they're not overpaying for the property, doing a, a thorough home inspection to make sure that they're fully um, aware of what the condition and the, and the pitfalls of the property are, um, you know, all the way through and with the seller as well, it's a series of decisions. You know, when you're listing a home, you have to be very clear on what is my product? What am I, what am I marketing? And you can't, you can't identify what you're marketing if you don't evaluate the property with like a pre-listing um, inspection. And so, by explaining my role as their advisor in laying out every juncture, you're going to have decisions to make. And I'm going to give you all the information you need to make good decisions at those points. And we're going to work together to overcome the challenges that come up to reach the favorable outcome that you want. But setting the expectations from the very beginning that this is a process we will do our best to manage it and anticipate the challenges, but there will be unexpected uh, developments, and I have the resources to help you get through them. Excellent. And, you know, it, it always goes back to um, really pre-counseling, we're not attorneys, but 
pre-educating people on the purpose of a home inspection, the expectation of what's going to happen when we have the home inspection and what it's for and what it's not for, right? And saying, you know, it's not to renegotiate, you know, 50 items, but really to find out material defects. You're buying a used home. I mean, this is, you know, education and value. And I feel like the more we can equip the buyers and the sellers on what happens during those home inspections, the easier it is to navigate when it comes up. You know, nobody likes surprises. And I always say bad news isn't bad news when it's delivered on time, you know, and if it's, and if they already know what to expect, you know, it's okay to tell a seller, you could expect a certain amount of dollars that you're going to have to do to keep this deal together. And that's okay. Right. And there could be things we don't know either. So, you know, um, all great answers. And I, I, I want to talk about um, the home inspections because um, I think it's really important to, this is one of those items, you know, most agents are probably um, removing a home inspection, thinking that that's making their offer better. Um, as John said earlier, it's, it's really not advantageous. It's not in the buyer's best financial interest. And it's also probably potentially also not in the sellers. So how do you handle the home inspection process really for both sides. And I mean this not like once you have the home inspection, I'm talking about on the front end when you are representing buyers and sellers and you're trying to get an offer and this is highly competitive, multiple offer, complexities of, of multiple offers right now. How do you, if someone says, I wanna take it out to make my offer better, what's your answer to that? And then also even, even before that, um, you know, how can you get, your offer presented and accepted while keeping that home inspection intact? Who wants to go first with that heavy, big question? <laughs> um, I would love to. This is, okay. I would love to take <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, before I get into Sherry's actual question, uh, something that I wanna touch base on is that Sherry was saying, hey, this is you should have a home inspection on used homes. You should have a home inspection on all homes. Even if it's a new build, I've seen so many things wrong on new builds. The difference is when it's a new build, you still have your home inspection, but then you just give them the list and they'll fix everything on it. So where Sherry said this was on used homes, all homes you should do a home inspection, like period. Um, and there's a big misconception out there right now. A lot of people are like, oh, everybody's waiving their home inspection. That's actually not true. A lot of people are doing the home inspections. Some people are waiving their ability to ask for inspection items. So they're saying, hey, we're still gonna do the full inspection. We just won't ask for anything. It's just for information purposes only, or it's, you know, either we'll take it or we'll leave it, but we won't ask for anything. So just throwing it out there, I would still recommend a home inspection even on new builds. I've seen all sorts of lovely things that were ultimately fixed by the builder. So, you know, just throwing out there, you do want it on both sides. So when it comes to limiting your risk and still having your clients be protected, one of the strategies that I've been doing lately when we are in the very competitive market that I'm in, a lot of people are taking properties and saying, hey, we're doing the inspection, we're just not asking for anything. Well, I actually got a property under contract about a week and a half ago, and we actually asked for some things. And so in our offer to make it competitive, we basically said we would not ask for any items unless they were over $5,000. And so when I talked to the listing agent, he's like, well, we have another offer that's taking it or leaving it, taking it as is or walking away. And I was like, let me explain why my offer is stronger. And he was like, oh, please do tell. <laughs> and I basically explained to him that, on the clients who were taking it or leaving it, if the roof was bad or the sewer was bad, they were ultimately going to terminate. And now the seller has to go back on market and they now have to disclose all of the issues that they that were found. So they're not going to get as much money if they have to go back on market. And it's just not a good situation for anybody. By limiting our inspection to items over five grand, we show that, hey, we're not in it to nickel and dime you to death, but I do still need to protect my clients. And ultimately, if there is something bad like the roof, we are going to work through it with the seller to negotiate an outcome that works well for both parties, as opposed to the other offer where they would have just walked if the, if the roof or sewer line were bad. So ultimately, I convinced the agent that my offer is indeed stronger, even though we did leave the ability to ask for some things. And it's honestly really good that I did because the roof did turn out to be bad. So 
Uh, the other people absolutely would have terminated it and we are working with the seller to get past it. So can you share, and I love this whole dialogue, can you share, how did you, I know we're, we're not attorneys, we're writing up these addendums. How did you write that in a way that gave you the flexibility of both? Yeah, so in Colorado, we actually go to additional schooling versus some of the other states to practice limited law in the form of real estate. So I do actually draft all of the contracts. Um, and on the contract, I basically wrote, buyers retain the rights to do full inspections, but will not ask for any repairs or concessions unless the individual item is over $5,000. And that money amount varies per client. So, you know, some of my clients are, are handymen and they're willing to take it at a much higher number. Some of my clients are not handy at all. So, you know, that number was a lot smaller. So that five grand isn't set in stone, but it was a big enough number to show the seller that we're not in it to be petty. We love this house. My clients really want it, but they do still need to be protected. Outstanding. And, um, you know, there's that adage of like good news, bad news, good news, you know, and you're, you're framing everything you say really with my clients love it. We need to protect them. We're still the best offer and here's why. And if anybody, I mean, I, I think it's worth repeating because this was so you know, when you hear we're in competition, the other offer was take it or leave it. And Kimberly, you were able to really explain the better choice is working with us because if there is a problem, we're still in the game. We're still here. We haven't left and we will still be here working out another smaller negotiation, obviously, but we're not just going to cut and run. So I think that's just your goal right there so thank you know that we are dedicated to closing the deal like hey yes we might be asking for a few things but we are dedicated to take this to closing like we're not in it just to flake out when we see the inspections not pretty it's like we're still in it for the long run what a benefit to your buyer really and and ultimately the educational moment to the listing agent who probably thought you know what Kimberly, she's, you know, you're actually, you're so right on. Um, there is an issue. You guys are working it out. And how many offers were there when you wrote that offer? I'm just curious. Uh, I believe there were seven or eight. Uh, we actually got our offer pretty early. We got our offer in pretty early. So I'm not sure what the total number of offers was. Uh, but the time I submitted, I believe there were seven or eight other offers. Yeah, that's just um, amazing. Really great stuff right there. So Dawn, thank you, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Dawn, you have some, some great strategies and i know some dialogue you use with both buyer and seller tell us what you're doing and you're doing it so well and so effectively well thank you um you know kimberly had such great points on the buyer so i'll talk a little bit more about the seller side when i take a listing i um, i highly encourage the sellers to get a pre-listing inspection done and a lot of them at the beginning are concerned about doing this because they'll say well what if something comes up that I'm not aware of. And I said, exactly. Because when yeah. you when the seller enters into a contract with a buyer, the power shifts from the seller to the buyer. Sellers got all the power when there are multiple offers coming their way. They can pick and choose which buyer they want to work with. But once you choose one buyer and the house comes off the market, you absolutely live in fear of having to reactivate your home. Um, because when a home goes back on the market after a week or two weeks, you know, especially here in Chicago, the first perception that agents in the market has is, well, there must have been something wrong with the inspection and they couldn't work it out. So we want to do everything we can to avoid that situation. And another thing to keep in mind is that just because buyers make an offer as is and your the seller's expectation is that, okay, great, that means they're not going to ask for anything as a result of the inspection. Their only remedy would be to terminate. Eight times out of 10, the buyers in this area are still asking for something to be repaired. And the sellers are then put in a position where they have to balance, well, what would I gain by putting the house back on the market? Or would it be really be in my best interest to fix what they're asking for, even that was so, though it was supposed to be as is? And yes, I'm frustrated that this wasn't the offer that I expected it to be, but it's still a better bet on my end to remain in this contract and work through the repair. Now, as um, if in approaching a listing, by doing a pre-listing inspection, the seller does become aware that there are small things or even large things that need to be done. 
then we can we can uh, create a plan to work through it. Many of the small things we're just going to knock out before the house ever goes on the market, which is going to give the home the impression that it's in very, very good shape. It's very well maintained. There's no small little things adding up that give buyers an uneasiness about, about the, the quality of the home. And if large items are um, encountered that you know, the seller isn't in a position to put $20,000 into a cedar shake, roof, cedar shake roof or something sizable like that, now we can go ahead and get quotes on what it will take to make that repair. And we can put the house on the market disclosing this, this defect with potential solutions, even offering a credit to have the work done. And now by taking control of the, the dialogue of what's this repair going to cost, now we have preempted, we, we have moved first by saying, yes, we know the chimney needs to be tuck pointed and we know it's going to cost $5,000. Instead of leaving it up to the buyer to get their home inspection, inspecting the chimney on their own, having an inspector, you know, create an inflammatory situation about, oh, that's going to cost $50,000. The buyer then going out and getting quotes for thirty dollars or $40,000 for tuck pointing. And now we're negotiating a $20,000 credit instead of taking control of that dialogue and saying, yes, we know there's tuck pointing to be done. It will only cost $5,000. Here's your credit. And that's the way the house goes on the market. And in my opinion, that really maximizes the control that the seller maintains throughout the transaction. Excellent. Excellent. And I will say, you know, we coach a lot in, you know, managing expectations when it's not live and imagine the, the de-stressing, okay, in both scenarios, Kimberly's and Dawn's, where you're really taking that emotional driven stress out of the equation when it's not live and they can be sort of a little more sane about the decision making. Um, and not be making crazy decisions, as Kimberly was pointing, when they're stressed out and they make, you know, take it out, whatever. And everybody's a little bit more, you know, relaxed, right? We can we can minimize the items. We can minimize the um, the drama of the items. Sometimes, right, things can get out of control. Uh, clients' hairs on fire. Their agent's hair goes on fire. Everybody's hair's on fire. Right? It's not fun. <laughs> That is not fun for anybody. And then it's just a lot of extra energy uh, and it's just exhausting really for everybody. So managing this ahead of time is so vitally important. And I really, um, I love how you both do that. Um, I want to ask too, because, you know, oftentimes um, either in a competitive situation, you know, or a not competitive situation in really a balanced market, so many uh, times people will say, you know, I'm not going to do a home inspection. My uncle's, uh, you know, a contractor. I've got someone in the family, a friend of the family that comes up all the time, right? A competitive environment or not. How do you, what's like, what's your quick line? Uh, we don't have to go too far out on this. I'll move on to another topic. But like, what do you say, Don, when people say, you know, I'm going to waive my home inspection because I have a, a, because, not because of a competitive situation, but because you know, my family or someone in, in my family does contracting work. You know, there's a reason that home inspectors take their continuing education. And I tell them, you know, they they know the latest and most pertinent information in this market on these types of homes in this area. And you really cannot, you cannot undervalue the, um, the benefit of having a professional home inspection done. If license, they, if license, they still insist, certified. Um, Yes, licensed and certified. And if they say, well, you know, my, my dad builds houses, but if they don't use a licensed home inspector, then they have lost the ability to request any repairs yes. that may arise as a course of their home inspection under their contract terms. And so anytime a client still insists on not having a professional home inspection done, I get it in writing. That's how strongly I advise against it. Okay, right. Because they could ask for the, they could actually ask for the inspection and then still choose a non-certified inspector, aka Uncle Bob. Uh, Kimberly, weigh in for this and for me, please, on this too. So my husband is actually a general contractor. We still paid for a licensed home inspector on every one of our properties. Because even though my husband is fully capable of fixing all of the things, my husband doesn't necessarily know what he is looking for on a home inspection. So, you know, he knows to test outlets, but 
you know, he doesn't know what water pressure should be. He doesn't know the, you know, the new codes that are always evolving, things like water heaters, if they have an expansion tank, those expansion tanks should be strapped, secured somehow, not just hanging from the copper pipe. And like, these are the little things that an inspector would notice and would know to look for, but a, you know, a general contractor, maybe not. So, you know, I always tell clients they should do a home inspection. Again, it comes up pretty regularly on new builds and I've seen a mess of things on new builds. One of the new builds that I closed last year, the sump pump was actually plumbed backwards. So the water was being pulled into the house instead of pushing out of the house. Okay. It have cost tens of thousands of dollars in damage. My clients saved themselves that tens of thousands of dollars of damage because I basically told them that they really need to do a home inspection that $700 saved them tens of thousands of dollars in flood damage. So absolutely right. still need to do a home inspection. And if they don't, same thing as Dawn, I have them put it in writing that they're choosing not to. So they can't come back later and say, well, you never forced me to do this. Right. My staff educate you and guide you. Ultimately, they're right. I can't force them, but I'm here to protect them. And so it's in their best interest to still do a home inspection no matter what. You Sherry, know, Sherry, Sherry, can, I replicate, uh, can I replicate Dawn and Kimberly, please? Can I please. Is a replication machine where I can have millions <laughs> of people like Dawn and Kimberly? That would be awesome for us. I know it's like we're yes. singing, we're saying, we're speaking your both your languages. We're going to talk about warranties in a little bit, but everything you both just said, I mean, it is sometimes a whether it's whether it's 150 or 950 thousand dollar sale it's all relative and it is so people wave sometimes people are waving point of you know a home inspection because they think that the va or the fha is going to cover it again they don't find those things and a city inspection is not going to find some of the things that you just heard Kimberly and Don speak of because that's not on their list. And, you know, I, I've personally had transactions where they said, oh, I'm just going to, you know, my, my VA loan covers it. I said, it doesn't. And sure enough, it was a problem. And I like uh, both of you had them sign off and initial twice that they had waived that, even though I told them to have one. So I think it's really um, in everyone's best financial interest, but ours as what we do to guide people, we want repeat business, right? We want referral business, and that going that extra mile to explain this is really going to pay off um, in the long run for everybody. And it's just about having. Sometimes it's not the popular answer, but it's the right answer, right? I mean, when people, it, it doesn't mean we're there to agree with every single thing. And I see it, a mistake that agents make, and that they do that. We're going to talk about how to have uh, effective negotiation strategies right now. And that's just one of the things, you know, when we over mirror our client, we're not doing them any good, right? It's just agreeing with them to agree with them and sort of, but they're, what they're looking for us to do is give them real educational value on everything, right? Here are the options and here are the risks and benefits of not doing one. Here are the, here are the risks and benefits and here are the benefits of doing one. And now, sometimes you have to tell anecdotal stories about clients who didn't and it cost them tens of thousands of dollars. And um, I want to ask both of you right now um, in this segment to talk about how you work with other agents, uh, negotiation strategies right now and how you handle working with other agents um, in a world of high tech. We're not always, you know, people aren't answering their phones and I, I think that's hurting us. Um, how do you get in front of the listing agent when there are multiple offers? I'm going to start with Kimberly because I know she does that. Um, tell us your best negotiation strategies, both with buyers or sellers or you know, really either one, that has helped you be so successful in getting the job done and negotiating. So I would say there's a couple things. So the first thing is that there's a big misconception that it's the buy side versus the sell side. It's really not. Buying or selling a home is a team effort and everybody needs to be on the same team to get it to closing. And so I think that when people step back and realize it's not us versus them, it's how can we work together? That is one of the key points in negotiation, which is that, hey, 
I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to screw you. You're not trying to screw me. We're trying to work together. So taking that into consideration is really helpful. And one of the biggest key factors is really good communication. So when I left that home inspection last week and we found out the, the roof was not good, the first thing I did when we left was I called the listing agent. I was like, hey, just want to give you the heads up. The sellers probably should file an insurance claim because we're going to be asking for a new roof. And you know, my clients still want this house. They they just do need a new roof before we can proceed. Um, and so, you know, being that agent that has that communication and that makes that phone call right away, I didn't wait a week out to turn in my inspection objection. I called him as soon as we left. I was like, I will draft up the contract later today, but I'm just giving you the heads up right now so you can already start talking to the seller and so they know it's coming. And it's like, it's not me versus them, it's us together. How can we as a team get to the closing table? I I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, I, I always give the example of just changing the word sometimes my to the. So when we say, I'm not gonna let my buyer, and it's like, oh my gosh, right? The word my, if we just substituted that possessive pronoun out with the word the. We would mm -hmm. speak as realtor to realtor, and it is a win-win. One side's not supposed to feel, you know, raked over. So, Kimberly, great points, and it is a team effort, and everybody should feel good at the end. Both sides, both parties should feel good, um, and that's really good stuff right there. So, Don, your thoughts on negotiation strategies? I think one of the best negotiation strategies, um, especially in a competitive market, is to get the other agent to want to work with you. If you come across as congenial and you're you're enthusiastic about the property and they get the impression that you're going to be easy to work with, that you're a pleasant person, that you're there to make their, their job easier in this process, um, everybody wants to work with people who they like and who are good, who are easy to work with. And I think from the from the get go, if if your every communication with the other agent is along those lines, um, it, it's just human nature. They will gravitate to you. They will want to work with you. So when I show a property, I try to I try to schedule our showings for as close to the beginning of the list and going on the market as possible. If my buyers love it and they really want it, I immediately leave feedback or even text them or call them and let them know my buyers just saw this property is absolutely gorgeous. They're so excited it's on the market. We're going to be putting in an offer. And then that way they remember you from step one. And then every communication after that is going to be positive. Um, I, I make sure that I craft every email that I send to the other agent, either with the offer or with counters, in a way that I expect that they're going to share it with their client. Oftentimes, if I'm making an offer um, that might not be full price, I will include very respectful reasoning why I, we feel that the offer is appropriate for that property based on the price we used. And in a way, it helps the listing agent explain to their client why this offer is, is a good number, even though it might not be the one they were expecting. So if you if you craft all of your communications in mind that the seller is going to read them, if you are enthusiastic and easy to work with, if you are very cooperative in your approach, um, it's just human nature. People will want to work with you more than even if a higher offer came in that the other agent didn't communicate or the agent didn't know who they were. Um, you know, people liking you goes a long way. Enthusiasm wins every time. And, uh, you know, it is so true. You start and end every single point on a, on a high note. Nothing worse than, you know, shoving a bunch of comps at somebody and saying why their house isn't worth something. I remember, you know, having, I don't know, we, back when I was managing a huge company and I would have sellers call me and they would say, do you know how offensive this is? I'm paying these people to tell me my house isn't worth this, you know? And it's like, let's come at this with as you just said, so eloquently done, respectful reasons, where we're coming from, we're in it to win it, all of us, this is a, you know exciting thing. And, and sometimes it's great when you say to somebody, we're gonna get your house sold today. And they're like, I don't think so. And you're like, oh no, we are, like this is happening because you're the one that's so positive that nothing, right? No one else's bad negativity mojo is gonna bring you down because even the lowest <laughs> offer that you're writing, right, on those houses we can't give away right now, they're out there, um, will get accepted. And that that's just, um, 
being strategic, it's being smart. And I'll end on this, you know, when um, we listen to emotion over facts, we can we can overcome people's objections. We figure out what is going on behind their reasoning of, of what's bothering them. And it just comes with asking a lot of questions and digging a little bit more sometimes and just saying, I understand that you're disappointed, you know, by the price that we have right here. I'm actually more offended by the 28 people who saw your house and didn't write an offer on it, right? I mean, there's perspective and everything. And so um, it just comes down to, you know, as you said, enthusiasm wins, having the right positive attitude and positive communication. And even when that agent says, because people tell me now, Sherry, no one talks on the phone. And I'm like, mm, that's not true. You can you can change that. You can be an ambassador for good, phenomenal communicative negotiations. All you have to do is say, this is better, text it. This is gonna be a better conversation and more successful if we speak. So this thing, this notion, online contracts for all of us has been amazing. Online showings, amazing, right? Saves us time, we can track things. It doesn't take our take the job away of overcoming objections though. And, and so many sellers, really good savvy ones know that. Um, I wanna ask you, um, because we're talking about a lot of risk, um, appraisal gaps, and um, you don't have to go very long on this answer, but we're taking out appraisal gap, we're, we're putting in appraisal gaps. We're some are saying, don't worry about the appraisal. Um, just so our listeners can hear um, a little bit about your strategies on dealing with the appraisal. Uh, Kimberly, how do you handle this world of appraisal gap and appraisal guarantees and getting your yeah. offers? For everybody listening, if you're not sure what an appraisal gap is or an appraisal guarantee, what that is is if you're getting a loan on the house, ultimately the loan, the lender is going to send an appraiser out to the house to come up with a value that they feel the house is worth. That's the amount of money that you're, they will loan you on. So if they think the house is worth 600 and you're under contract at 650, they're not going to give you the mortgage for the full 650. They're only giving you the mortgage on the appraised value. So what an appraisal gap is, it's the buyer's way of saying, hey, we're giving you the price that we're under contract on. And if appraisal comes in low, we're willing to make up that difference in cash out of pocket. So I just want to throw that out there because there's, I'm sure there's a couple of people listening out there who are like, I don't even know for what sure. that means. So that's what an appraisal gap coverage is. Ultimately, it comes down to pulling comps. It really does. And finding out like, you know, what is the value of this area? Is the value going up? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? To what amount is it worth it? And I will say, one of my clients from a couple of years ago, they offered a $10,000 appraisal gap guarantee because a few years ago, $10,000 was a good appraisal guarantee. <laughs> um, and so they offered a $10,000 appraisal guarantee. Appraisal came in $6,000 low. My client paid the $6,000 difference. Two years later, I sold his house for $178,000 more than what he bought it for. So that $6,000 was a really smart investment to later get him $178 additional thousand dollars. So, you know, yes, are we doing some sort of appraisal gap coverage? Yes, in our market, it is almost the guaranteed thing that will get your offer accepted, but it's really about finding the comps in the area and making sure that the value is still there and the value is continuing to go up. And given we can't control the entire market, we don't control rates, there are things that can happen and change it, but again, you're just trying to go into it as educated as possible and figure out what that monetary amount is. Excellent description. I, there's nothing more I can add to that. It's really concise and right on the mark. And you know, when you you've said before, I've heard you use the term as the, if this is their forever home. You know, that's a that's a factor that plays into this as well. If someone's going to want to move in the next 12 months, it, they may not be you know it may not be wise for them to do that. It's all relative, and the more education you give them, the more data the more you can help them make a decision that's in their best financial interest. Don, how are you handling the appraisal and appraisal gaps and guarantees? What's going on out there? Well, you always have to verify that if somebody's offering to cover an appraisal gap, that they actually have the funds to do it. And I and I prod a little bit deeper. And and you know, if if it includes a twenty or thirty thousand dollar appraisal gap, you know, guarantee, um, if they don't have the funds or or are the funds coming from an outside source, will this be a gift? You know, you need to know really what is a buyer, what are their capabilities, and and cashing that check, their mouth is writing. Um, but really, more from a seller standpoint. What I, the way I like to handle appraisal gaps is to do everything I can to make sure there isn't going to be one. 
And the number one way is to price their house right and provide the comparables that you used in pricing the home. Um, if it's an unusual property that would benefit from that, you know, provide them to brokers, maybe in the private section of the broker remarks on your MLS listing sheet. The number one way though that you can avoid an appraisal gap is by meeting the appraiser at the property with a well-prepared, well-documented appraisal packet. Now, most appraisers in this market, because they are so busy and they're making less money than they ever were on the appraisals that they're doing, they're under the gun to turn their reports around quickly. You know, mistakes can happen, but know that very, um, very rarely will they admit that they made a mistake. And so doing a reconsideration of value, you know, it's, it's really a long shot. So you want to avoid a shortage, if at all possible. So in your appraisal packet, you know, you're going to want to have the obvious things like the contract and the riders and the disclosures and so forth. But in mine, um, I include a detailed log of all of the showings that we had and all of the feedback that we had, you know, provided that it's mostly positive. I also include page one of all of the other offers that we received showing the appraiser, look, you know, we went on the market at 475 and we had offers up, upwards of $525,000, but that's not even the one that we took. We took one that is only 490 because we feel that that's a more reasonable number. Um, we wanted to be realistic about the value and, you know, and, and, and paint the picture for the appraiser that there's so much demand for this property that it is worth what the buyer is willing to pay. We've got backup offers, we've got showing logs, we've got multiple offers right in front of us. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, you know, it is, it's interesting too that, you know, most people don't understand the purpose of the appraisal. When they're buying a house, um, they they think it's for them. It's not. It's as Kimberly pointed out, it's for the bank. And um, you know, there's obviously it was cash and appraisals, it's a whole completely different reason when would be done, but it's really for the bank. And those answers were just spot on and great. I'd like to ask you both, how do you use the benefits of a home warranty in the negotiation, both buyer and seller? I'll start with you, Kimberly. Real quick, before we actually move into the home warranty, something else that I want to mention is VA loans and FHA loans follow a much stricter appraisal guideline. So on VA loans and FHA loans, because they are government backed, the house needs to be safe and sanitary. So you can't have dangling wires, you can't have missing handrails. There are things that must happen in order for the property to pass a VA or FHA appraisal. So mm -hmm. when you're limited your inspection because again there's a lot of people who are like well i can't waive my inspection it's a va loan again we're not actually waiving the inspection we're waiving the ability to ask for things but you can still be competitive even with a va or fha offer and in colorado i use the verbiage you know buyer retains the right to do full inspections but will not ask for any repairs or concessions unless the items are you know above x dollar amount or are required by VA or FHA to pass appraisal. So just throwing it out there, like some of those people who are like, oh, but on my VA loan, none of this works. It does work. 70% of my clients are VA loans and like we still get them to closing through inspection, through appraisal and still be out cash and conventional offers in a multiple offer situation. So I just got a client under contract two weeks ago, VA loan, putting very little money down. We beat out a conventional offer that was putting $200,000 down because the rest of the contract was written so cleanly, but we did still leave ourselves the ability to ask for anything that would be required to pass appraisal. So just throwing it out there, just because you're VA or FHA, this conversation yeah. still applies to you. Absolutely great to add. Um, I'd like, um, so let's go into uh, home warranties and how they're used both ahead of time in the buyer consultation discussion, as well as if the home comes with one, the value of that to a buyer who's who's purchasing, and then also the buyer purchasing one. So who would like to start? I feel like I should let Dawn start on this one because I feel like I just okay, Dawn. last one. <laughs> Dawn. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I am a huge fan of um and, and and in my opinion, I, I like to carry the warranties that I recommend clients use. I carry them on my own property. 
properties because I want to know exactly you know what's the depth of coverage, what is the customer service like. Um, you know, what is the time frame? For Don, I can't um, flip for hey, Don. For You're cutting in and out, uh, and uh, just on different I, I, I hate to interrupt you, but I don't even know if you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Um, so we're getting it. We're getting it. Okay. I'm going to ask. Kimberly, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> if Kimberly can hear me. Brand new. I think Peter or, can uh, mute Don, even though that's rude to do. But I think Peter at Mission Control can mute Don. I think. Yeah, okay. well said. Yeah. I just temporarily muted muted Don. Perfect. Okay. Let's send her a message. Um, Kimberly, benefits of home warranty. Same question to you. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, so benefits of home warranty on the seller side is, hey, if something breaks from the time that you contract until the time you close, you can call on the home warranty and have that have the issue addressed. Uh, benefits for buyer. So, you know, a lot of times if the furnace or the air conditioner or the water heater are very old and past their typical life expectancy, but they're in still working in good order, if they still work really well, it's unlikely that the seller is going to give up any sort of concessions towards having that item fixed if it is working really well. So a home warranty is great because basically you pay the deductible, they come out and they address the issue and they'll fix it. So it's really nice to know that, you know, three months after you move in, instead of being like, oh my gosh, the furnace just broke. Well, if you have a home warranty and the furnace breaks, it's okay, you just call in the home warranty. So unlike these extended car warranties that we're all getting calls about all day long, uh, home warranties are actually a really good idea. Um, the important thing is to make sure that you're using a trusted company like 210. Um, and just to make sure that it's a company that's gonna stand by the warranty and that if something does break a big ticket item, whether it's a system or an appliance, that you can just call in the home warranty and come have those issues adjusted by just paying the deductible or trip fee instead of having to pay the five grand or 10 grand for an entire new unit. So they're definitely a great way to minimize your risk, just having that in your pocket for, you know, in case something comes up. Absolutely. And and I, I want to just weigh in. I still have a very active license and I'm and as a managing broker here in Cleveland, Ohio. And for 26 years, every single seller client that I've ever sold, I it is it comes with and the benefits are explained uh, because I believe in it so much. And um, even as you know, and every buyer. So if it's not coming and we, we negotiate it in ask for the seller, or in this case today, maybe it's just worth it for the buyer to purchase their own. Um, and Kimberly, you just said it, you know, if I told you how many times people had a full furnace, you know, complete replacement and thousands of dollars, and they were like, thank you for, for having us, for telling us to purchase this, whether it's 500 or $700 for the home warranty, it just really, pays off and that's why it's it's it helps reduce risk it helps people buy with confidence it helps lessen the stress of that you know home inspection where everybody's looking at the current age and saying what if what if um, I also think you know when we have to guide people I'm going to bring this up the home inspection process um, is mostly educational I mean this is what we're paying someone to come in tell us the age of things tell us um, you know, this is what you need to do to manage and, and maintain your home. This is not, you know, a, a material defect necessarily, but we can't get over um, alarmist. And I think uh, that is us to manage that and say, this is, these are material defects. These are not, this is going to be an issue you have year after year to manage the, you know, the, 
whatever of the house. I mean, so you see this all the time. Today, we're not seeing a whole lot of it because we're we're not asking for as much, but the real benefits of a, a home warranty, to me, just bring about peace of mind and the fact that buyers are like, so glad I have this. And that's, and we have the experience of seeing it when it's used, you know, and I think we can share that with, uh, with both clients, both buyers and sellers. Don, I don't know if your sound is back. Are you there? I don't. I think you may be Thank muted. you. Am, am I clear now? Okay. So home warranties, if you have anything you want to just add. Thank you. Know, you. And sorry about the seconds, sorry about the seconds or less. Okay. On the on the listing side, um, by putting a home warranty on a list on a seller's home, they're giving buyers permission to make better offers. If the house, whether it um whether the seller needs to put one on in a competitive market, if they do put one on, then buyers feel more comfortable making their offers as, as is. So it's a good negotiating tool to include whether or not the buyers ask for it. Excellent, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, there's, um, I think there's great value in working with the national companies that are reputable. And uh, you know, we're going to hear from both our sponsors in a moment. But um, we did have a question uh, that came up in the chat area. Uh, it's really for about home um, inspections. It says, I was just on another webinar and one of the agents suggested a walk and talk with the inspector where the buyer will hire the inspector who will walk through the showing a non-invasive inspection, just giving the buyer peace of mind. Is that something Pillar to Post does or will do? And John, maybe you could elaborate on that. Uh, we, we don't. Uh, we don't uh, do that because we, you know, it's um, um, there's just too much chance to miss things. Really, I mean, you're you're not you're not, you know, we're we're not in the business of I can do that inspection in two hours. I can do it in an hour and a half. I can do it for four hundred. I can do it for three hundred. Name. I'm not playing. We don't we don't play name that tune. Uh, we give the best home inspection in the business that gives buyers the ability to make a confident home ownership decision. And we just feel right now, despite their pressures, we've heard these questions before. We've been working all the trade shows lately, Remax, Berkshire, Realty One, and we get that question, and it's just not something we're prepared to do because I think at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't reduce risk for the home buyer and it doesn't reduce risk for the realtor. Oh, it's a yeah. total, yeah. Go ahead, Kimberly. So, you know, when you have that Uncle Joe who thinks he knows everything or, you know, you have your husband who's a contractor or your dad and they really think that they're hands, hand, you know, like hands on and can do things, you know, Take them to the walkthrough, take them to the showings, don't bring them to the inspection. Like hire a professional for the inspection, bring whoever wants to have their two cents, bring them to the showing. So, you know, that way they can feel like they got their two cents and they can point out some things that they see, but ultimately you still wanna hire an actual licensed inspector for the actual inspection. That's right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a surgery with a, with a non-qualified surgeon. You know, you want the best doctor, you want the, you know what I mean? You pay for that. Go ahead, Don. I was going to say that, you know, I tell all of my buyers, the home inspection is, you are going to get a two to three hour tour of your future home from a licensed home inspector. Those are two to three hours you do not want to miss because you are going to learn more about this home than you will ever have a chance to again. So look at this as an opportunity to get a detailed introduction to this property where you'll be able to ask questions about things that you don't understand and tips about, you know, future maintenance and home ownership. You know, it's an opportunity to really enrich yourself with knowledge moving into what is one of the biggest purchases you'll ever make. Yeah, like where the main shutoffs are. I mean, that in itself is worth going. I mean, I've had to turn off the water. If you've never had to do that in an emergency situation, if you don't know how, I mean, that's like that's scary stuff. And it can be, it can, it can, yeah. <laughs> then I'll be calling my own work, right? Not there. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm just going to ask you in one sentence. You know, what can these agents listening to both of you amazing women today, um, what can they do, you know, maybe a quick piece of advice that just says, you know, start doing this. If you haven't done it, 
you know, do a buyer consultation, whatever that is. Like, what is your best piece of takeaway advice you can give them? It can't be very long though for time, but what would you say? Um, I would say education, education, education. So, you know, educate yourself, educate your clients and go to the home inspections. I go to every one of my clients home inspection and I walk around with that inspector just like my clients do. So the better you educate yourself, the more you know what to look for when you are out with your next buyers. So there's lots of people who are like, oh, I don't need to spend three hours going to the inspection. Go to the inspections. You will learn so much more, which will ultimately help you become a better agent, which will help you be better for your clients and just education all day long. The more educated you are, the better it is for your clients and everybody involved. Outstanding. John. And first and foremost, you know, realize that you are there to protect your client. Never lose sight, no matter how stressful the, com the competition in the market may be, that you are being trusted to protect your client's best interest. And in addition to that, Equip yourself with a great team to solve problems, a great home inspector that you can work with, that you know their style, you know that they deliver a quality inspection, and a home warranty that you know well, that is trusted, that it is proven. And these are going to be great tools that you have in your arsenal to provide the best value to your clients to overcome every transaction challenge that you might come up with. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very, very good. And you know, I, I don't know about you, but what an outstanding webinar today. This has been so valuable and I just know I'm getting messages. I'm seeing that people are just love the dialogue, love what they're hearing. This has been fantastic. And Don and Kimberly, I cannot thank you enough. I'm thanking you on behalf of RIS Media. I'm also thanking you on behalf of our sponsors because I know they were, you know, it's just really so great to see you raising the level of professionalism really it, it's not a platitude for me to say that it is it's true i know both of you 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 know, you're both part of our coaching program and i just i know the work you do it's really been a pleasure today and and i had heard so many things that i had not heard you say before and i just know so many people got so much out of this today i think the sponsors agree with me and uh, so I want to thank our panelists today. Uh, you can reach Kimberly McAleenan at Realty One Group in Denver, Colorado on social media. If you have any referrals you want to send her, <laughs> I know she'll take them. And same with Don Hinton in Chicago land at Berkshire Hathaway. And go find them, you know, find them right now on social media. Connect with them. You can, you can, uh, I know they'll, they'll be happy to share uh, more ideas with you. And um, just thank you both. It's a it's such a pleasure knowing you personally as I do, but also I appreciate being on today's today's webinar. And I want to thank our sponsors, 210 Home Buyers Warranty and Pillar to Post Home Inspection, two of the most admired uh, companies in the industry. And uh, Sue Ellen, just really a big thank you to you for making this possible. The content was amazing, and you added so much value, John. Thank you too, because you both have, you know, really provided everybody with um, today's event because it was your idea. Like you came up with this, and and we're having this whole entire dialogue and webinar because of you guys and because of RIS Media too. So um, Sue Ellen has a uh, giveaway. Do you want to tell our listeners what they get here? Tell us a little bit about this, please. Yeah. Hi, Sherry. Thanks again. Um, so. It's in the, the PDFs. You can find the four pillars of risk management. It goes into a little more detail that will help you explain each item and reasons why, uh, you know, giving that, that big why uh, that we need to do this. Um, it gives you your persuasive case if you need that help. Also, um, just know that we're available uh, as a company, as your sidekick, as your warranty expert we're not asking you to be a warranty expert so call text uh website twitter facebook all of the <laughs> all outlets we answer and uh stand ready to help you with your client um a little prize for you as a takeaway uh thank you so much Thank you. And I just want to say, you know, all of us in, in uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty here in Ohio, you were just at our show. Um, you represent so many. Yes, absolutely. And and I know uh, this the quality of service you provide. This handout is a, is fantastic. It will be uh, in the 
will be in the, included in the broadcast email that's sent out to you. And then John, um, thank you for being here today and sharing your wisdom and your excellent points on home inspection benefits. Um, what can you tell everybody here that they can do with this link? Well, I just want to head to the link. Uh, we, we've revolutionized uh, the home inspection again. We have the ultimate home inspection that includes a floor plan and uh, and a visual summary of all the inspection items and PTP home check. I won't go into it here, but I would encourage you to go to that link. Uh, if your home inspector is not doing what's on that link, then I would uh, give Pillar to Post a call and see if uh, you can experience the Pillar to Post difference for yourself. Any questions, you can reach us at marketing at pillar .com, And we will be uh, next week uh, randomly selecting uh, an email address from one of the participants in, in today's webinar and giving them a $500 Amazon gift card. So uh, look for that. And I uh, really, really appreciate it. And uh, again, Kimberly and Dawn, uh, you are rock stars. Uh, if I could <laughs> replicate you, uh, I would. Um, you're doing my job better than I could ever do my job. So thank you so much. You're, you're amazing. And thank you, Sue Allen, for this opportunity. And Sherry, you did a heck of a job. Uh, well, this has been just a literally uh, group effort. And I love the, the $500 Amazon opportunity. But also, um, as you just said something so important. If you're not getting all of this from your home inspector, you know, really reconsider who's on your list. And that is great value right there. There's a list of things that your home inspector should be doing. Uh, the other handout on the four pillars of protection uh, with 210, both outstanding. Uh, Sherry Johnson Coaching, we have uh, a free giveaway for all of you out there, a 30-day trial of the Sherry Johnson Playbook, which is an online and on-demand coaching program, as well as a uh, one group call per month with me, a group coaching session. The uh, Sherry Johnson Academy is made available to you. Unbelievable content that will double, triple your business. Um, we have all kinds of amazing programs like how to make 50 grand at your next open house and how to build a, a 10 or 15 or $30 million pipeline of potential business. So that's all available. You can actually go to sherryjohnson.com forward slash risk media. Uh, again, sherryjohnson.com forward slash RIS media. And uh, we will email that out to you as well. The first 30 days are free. After that, it's only $99 a month. And this is no contracts and you can cancel anytime. It's really a great opportunity. Um, and we'd love to have you and I'd love to meet you. So I do the coaching uh, actually myself as well. And uh, as a matter of fact, Kimberly and Don are coaches uh, with us as well. So if anybody's looking for coaching you can do that with them as well um we are so happy that we got to put this uh, event together i do a lot of these this is what by far one of my favorite ones i gotta be honest and i want to thank you all again a video of the webinar will be uploaded we'll be also sending out uh the folks our awesome people peter and team from ris media will be sending all of you a broadcast uh, a link with the broadcast so you can play it back get all these gems, take notes again, hear something again. And um, we're just pleased and excited. This was really so, so valuable. And both of you, and actually all of you are just amazing at what you do. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to, to have moderated this. I wanna thank everybody. And I really wanna say, uh, go out there, raise your professionalism, be in the best interest of your clients. And remember that everything speaks and, and you can protect people and still put great deals together, lessen the stress and get repeat and business and referrals from, from your clients. And I just, I know that it will happen for you. Kimberly, Don, big thank you. Sue Ellen and John, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Peter, thank you for, for hosting and, and monitoring this for us on the back end. And everybody, I'm Sherry Johnson, you rock. I'll see you on our next RIS media webinar series. Everybody have a great week. Thank you. Long live happy homes. Bye. Bye.